Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. You'll find the clone stamp tool over here and it's got the shortcut S. First, I'm going to show you the general use of the clone stamp tool. Suppose you don't want this person jogging over here. I'll take the clone stamp and then sample the area which I think can best fill up this region. I'll sample this area over here. To sample a region, we have to press and hold Alt and then click. You can clearly see that the clone stamp has copied the pixels from here. Now we'll use these pixels to cover this up. I'll take the clone stamp and try my best to match the ground over here and then I'll click. We can use the clone stamp tool in two ways. First, you can use it as a spot treatment. So let's say I want a replica of this moon. I'll take my clone stamp tool, sample it with Alt and click. The pixels are copied and then I'll click over here. As for the next mode, we can also paint with the clone stamp tool. So let's say I want to have all these moons down here. I'll take my clone stamp and sample the starting moon. And as I start painting, keep an eye on this plus. It represents the region that is being replicated at the moment. So as the clone stamp moves, the plus moves along as well. Next, we are going to look at the clone source panel, which you can open from here or from here. First, we are going to look at clone source. You can see that we have five clone stamps, but only the first one is selected, right? I'm going to use this clone stamp to sample this letterbox. I'm going to click once over here. There we have it. Now let's use the next clone source. I'll use this to sample the second letterbox. I'll use one last one. And then sample the third letterbox. Now if I go in and select the first clone stamp, do you think it's going to remember this source or sample? We are going to find out. Looks like it does. I'm going to check the second clone stamp now. It remembers the orange letterbox. And the third one should give us the yellow, right? Next, we have these flip options. First, we're going to see without flip. So I'm going to sample this fish. I need to make the clone stamp bigger. So let's do that. Then we just alt and click. So here is the exact replica of the fish without any flip. Now I'm going to try the horizontal flip. I'm going to sample the fish again. So the fish is facing left. I'm going to check out the vertical flip now. Take a sample. And there we go. The fish is facing up. We can also use both the flips together. So let's do that. So the fish is now pointing up and left. Next, we are going to go over the scaling properties, which are width and height. Both the values are linked. So if one changes, the other changes too. You can of course unlink them by clicking over here, but I'm going to use it while they are linked. Let's have 66 for width and height. Sample the source. You can see how diminished the size is at 66%, right? Next, we have angle. Let's say I want to rotate the source at an angle of 40 degree. Do the usual sampling with Alt and click. And there we have our angle. Next, we're going to look at source coordinates and offset coordinates. But before that, I need to explain aligned. First, we are not going to use aligned. I'm going to sample the first flower. And then paint all the flowers down here. No matter where I want to paint, I'll always get the preview of the first flower. Let's paint from here. Now we're going to check aligned. Sample this flower like before. And now as I gradually move the clone stamp from the source, Photoshop is going to calculate the X and Y coordinates of the clone stamp from the source. But how is it useful? I'll show you in a moment. First, I'm going to complete the drawing. I'll stop here and let go of the mouse button. Now like before, when aligned was not checked, will we get the preview of the sampled yellow flower too when I move the clone stamp? Looks like we don't. So if I wish to replicate the yellow flower over here, I cannot. I cannot here as well. There's only one place where I can and I'm certain that place is here. But how am I so sure you may ask? That's because I know that Photoshop has calculated the offset coordinates from here. And now, it's going to use the same offset, but from this flower. Therefore, the next yellow flower is going to start from here, right? Let's see if it's true. 
I'm gonna gradually move the clone stamp to the right location and there we go. So let's click and paint. This way it can go on forever but we don't have that space right now. There's one more way in which you can understand the aligned option. First let's have the aligned option unchecked. I'm gonna sample this yellow flower and start painting over here. But suppose I accidentally cut off at the green flower. What if I resume the painting to get the pink and white flowers? There's no way. It's gonna start from the yellow again. Now let's try aligned. I'm gonna sample the yellow flower like before. And then start painting the flowers. I'll let go of the mouse button here. Now let's see if we can resume the painting. Even if I simply hover the clone stamp, you can see the preview of the pink and white flowers, right? So let's quickly paint them. Now let's begin with the source option. You get the source option here when aligned is unchecked. Now there are two ways to assign a source. First is the manual way, you alt click on the object you want to make the source. Like if I want to make this yellow flower the source, I'll alt click on it. But here, you can directly input the coordinates of the object you want to make a source. Let's say you want this blue flower to be the source, and you also know its coordinates. This for example is 1567 pixels for X and 364 pixels for Y. I'm gonna put those values here. This is X and Y. I'm gonna quickly enter the X value and then the Y. So now if we take the clone stamp, we get the blue flower. Similarly, I'll use the coordinates of this red rose, which is 962 pixels for X and 344 pixels for Y. Here we have our red rose. Now we'll look at the offset option, but here we see only source, no offset. To get the offset option, we have to check aligned. Now let's sample this yellow flower. And now as I move the clone stamp and click, Photoshop is gonna note the offset. So if we take the source point as 0, 0, this is minus 18 pixels on the x-axis and 235 pixels on the y-axis. Now without letting go of the mouse button, I'll complete the painting. As you already know, Photoshop has locked the offset at minus 18 pixels for x-axis and 235 pixels for the y-axis. So you won't get another preview of the yellow rose anywhere on the screen other than over here. Why? Because now Photoshop is gonna consider this flower as the origin. So with an offset of minus 18 pixels and 235 pixels, we get the point over here. Let's see if I'm right. Yes, I am. And we can go on forever like this. We can also input the offset value. But first, let me sample the source. As I move the clone stamp, you can see that the coordinates are also changing. But what I want to do is, I want to directly enter the values over here. I want the offset to be here and I also know the coordinates of this position. 389 pixels on x-axis and 266 pixels on y. I'm gonna put these values here and then press enter. On the basis of what we have learned so far, we shouldn't get any yellow flower until we reach this point, right? Well, let's find out. So nothing till now and here we get it. So let's click and paint. Now where do you think the next set of flowers will start? If this is now the origin, the offset of 389 pixels and 266 pixels starts here. And it will go on forever if we have that kind of space. Next we have show overlay or show sample preview. We have this checked now. Let's take a sample. And immediately you can see the preview of the sampled source. I'm gonna click over here. Now let's uncheck show overlay. I'll go and sample the clock. But now there's no preview for us. But it will work exactly the same if I click. Next we have overlay opacity or preview opacity. Let's see what we have at 100%. We'll have to sample the clock. You can see the preview with 100% opacity exactly like the original clock. Now I'm going to try a lower value for opacity. 40% looks fine. Now we go and sample. You can see that now the preview is semi-transparent, right? But rest assured, it won't affect the painting in any way. Next we have preview mode. First let's see normal which we have been using all this while. Sample the clock and the preview is the same as the source. 
You can try any of these but I'll show you darken. Now we get a sample and we get the darkening effect in the preview but it doesn't affect the paint. Next we have this invert option. This basically inverts the preview mode. So for this example, I'm going to be using the darken preview mode. We'll have to sample the source and this is our darken preview mode. Now I'm going to check invert. And right away you can see that the preview mode has inverted, right? Earlier it was that and now it is this. And like always, it doesn't affect the actual painting. Now we'll learn the clipped option. Clipped is checked. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna sample the front of this car. When the clipped option is checked, the preview is always going to be within the bounds of the clone stamp. Gradually as I paint, the other parts of the picture is gonna unveil, right? Now let's uncheck the clipped option. I'm gonna sample the same source again. But now, the preview is no longer constrained within the bounds of the clone stamp. The sampled source sticks with the clone stamp, that's alright. But now, we also get a preview outside the clone stamp. So if we start painting, we know exactly what we are painting on. Next, we'll see auto hide for which clipped has to remain unchecked. Let's click on auto hide. I'm gonna sample the front of the car and we get this humongous unclipped preview. Now with auto hide, if I click and start painting, the preview is gonna go away. I let go of the mouse button and the preview is back. This time we uncheck auto hide. Then we sample the car. So this is our big unclipped preview, right? And since auto hide is unchecked, the preview is not gonna go away when I click and start painting. You can also create your own custom clone stamp. For that, you click either here or here, same thing. We have this round brush right now and no other settings applied. So let's see how this clone stamp looks. Let's sample pixels from up here. And then we paint. So you can see it's pretty bland, nothing interesting about it. Let's select a different brush tip. I'll select this square. I'll increase the brush tip size. And this is how it looks. Next I'm going to change the angle value and increase the spacing of the brush tips. And this is our result. Last, maybe I can use some scatter to it. I'll tweak the count value as well. And this is our final clone stamp effect. Now I'm going to show you the hardness option. We have this round brush selected and the hardness is 100. I'll sample some pixels from here. And as you can see, the edge is really really hard. So now I'm going to reduce the hardness. This time the edge is not as hard. They fade out, right? And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.